Boss Man Show by NFL legend and former Atlanta Falcon great Michael Vick here on the Boss Man Show. Mike, man, how you think going to your end, man? How's that camp you had this week here in the ATL, man? Man, the camp was great. We had great participation. I want to thank all the parents for bringing their kids out, uh, being patient. You know, in the hot sun, we always out there, but it was uh, to everybody's benefit. I think the kids had fun. They got a lot out of it. And uh, I'm very pleased. And what's it mean to you that be back here in the city of Atlanta and giving back to the kids of Atlanta who look up to you? Like, like I'm 30 years old. A lot of the younger guys look up to you as well, Mike. Because the younger guys get on the field with you, and you can coach them guys that give them pointers from your experience playing in the NFL. How do it make you feel good to get these kids that, that joy of being around you, an uh, ATL legend like yourself? Yeah, well, I want to make the kids feel special, knowing that they have a uh, professional a former professional player that they idolize, looked up to, heard a lot about, have read about. Um, know my background, um, know the type of success I've had, and would listen to my stories, would listen to me coach them, um, and, and give me an open ear. And sometimes you can't get that from kids, but I feel like in so many ways I can. They gravitate to me, and they they appreciate my perspective, and I just try to continue to. Uh, teach as much as I can and help as many kids as I can. We got Mike Vick here on the Boss Man Show. Now, Mike, you're heading to take your next stop on your camp, the Elite Playmaker Series, the showcase here going to Virginia Beach, Virginia, your home state, 757, out there at the Virginia Beach Fieldhouse. How, how's it going to feel if you be back home? And this, this is like a, your, on the, on your home, home games for you in Virginia Beach there. At the kids in the yeah. How is it going to make you feel, yeah. man, on June 4th out there, man, at the Fieldhouse? Yeah, man, back home, man. The kids back home need to come out. I mean, we got a ton of talent, and I look forward to seeing that talent come out, working with some of the quarterbacks, receivers, the DBs out there, the offensive linemen. I want to encourage everybody to come out. Uh, the first three showcases, Dallas, Nashville, and Atlanta was awesome. And we want to keep that momentum going. We want Virginia to be one of the biggest. And uh, we want to invite all, encourage the coaches to bring your kids out. You know, let them get that exposure, uh, see what this combine, if this camp is all about because it's different, and uh, let them have a great time at the showcase. And if Mike, you don't have a big, a big all-star game here for the guys who's resting out at the camp. So, so when you plan on having that game in the ATL, you're trying to play it at maybe Georgia Tech or Georgia, Georgia State, maybe you got got those kind of plans, kind of final rounds here for that big all-star game from the event. Yeah, we, we're going to partner up with a company who already has a, a freshman, sophomore, and a junior game. Or if I'm not mistaken, it's a uh, – yeah, I think that's it. Freshman, sophomore, junior game, and we're going to bring our all-star game and do them all on the same day. And I think it's going to be uh, very special. The kids are excited about it. They compete. They try to play into in the game and get elected. And uh, I respect their um, – just their perspective as far as uh, their approach to – doing everything they can to have success at our camps. And now, Mike, uh, also, do, do you want to actually coach it collegially or professionally? I see getting into coach, you have the kids showing them the way. Do you want to get into coach professionally or in collegiate on that level? You just want to give, give back to kids. Yeah, I mean, down the road at some point in my career, I do want to coach on a professional level. Uh, I feel like I can relate to guys well. I relate to players well. And uh, it, it, you get just as much as uh, comfort um, in teaching and helping uh, than anything else. So uh, I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm taking, you know, some steps to try to, you know, make sure I ensure that I can become a coach down the road. But, uh, you know, I'm just looking forward to, you know, enjoying this time and working with the kids and just taking it one day at a time. We got Mike Vicky on the Boss Man Show. Now, Mike, I also see where you're going to be helping out with the American Flag Football League. So I want to ask you, are you going to be out there throwing the ball around yourself or are you just going to be like a substance coach in that league? Are you actually trying to bring on guys and recruit guys and get guys in that league as well? Yeah, well, I'm going to play around a little bit, man. I'm going to see what it all entails. I'm looking forward to it. It's exciting to have another professional league in the flag football league non-contact, you know, you're just pulling flags. and uh, It's another opportunity to enhance your game, to play the game. And for people who are not finished or don't feel like they're done, this is another uh, gateway to playing football. Now, Mike, can you, now how often do you still work out and sling the ball around? Are you, are, you, are you with the full retired guy mode, or do you, you still get out there and kind of work out and compete a little bit out there? Yeah, I still work out a little bit so I don't, so I don't get the – you know, get the guts, the beer belly. Hey, <laughs> you don't uh, want that. Yeah, I, I, I still, I still, um, I do enough, man, to stay in, in good physical condition, and I still throw the ball around with my kids, so my arm stays in shape.
I hear you, man. And I got to say, Mills, good seeing you at the Falcons last game for Georgia Dome, man. Just for that moment for you, man, when the fans responded to you, gave you the biggest ovation, man. How did that make you feel seeing the fans of Atlanta still love you the way they loved you when you played here? And it's that roar they gave you, how that made you feel in that last day at the Georgia Dome and for all the Falcons that came in for alumni day, the last day at the Dome? Man, it just solidified everything uh, and assured me that I can always come back and I'm always welcome to the city, welcome uh, into any stadium, any arena uh, in the state of Georgia. And uh, I'm just very thankful that I I have that love and support and uh, the people always supported me even in in my darkest moments. And uh, you you can never uh, forget those times. So I'm just thankful. And anytime I'm in Atlanta, any fan that comes up to me and want an autograph, I try to give it. Try to be as cordial as I can because uh, those are great, uh, great people and you know of all denominations, man. And I just love them all. And I'm just very thankful. Now I got I got a couple for you, Mike. Is the first one of this right here on your typical game day, Mike? What was your routine to get ready? Let five people before you go out there feeling Carl fools what you did, man. What was your like pregame routine to get ready to go out there and perform what you did at the highest level each Sunday? Yeah, well, I just try to listen to some good music and mellow my mind out. I think I spend more time thinking about uh, the time it led to getting to the National Football League and what I went through, and that's what urged me to go out and be successful. And, uh, you know, I thought about the journey. I, I, I took my mind back to places where, you know, I, I lived a, as a kid and the moments I had as a kid when I set out to play in the National Football League and, it just helped me keep everything in perspective, man. So I think music is great for the mind, and I try to uh, be diverse in it and, you know, just be open about it. Final one for you, Mike. We ask all our guests on the show this week about the finals, Mike. Who you got? Cleveland, Golden State, and for this trilogy here, we oh, go with one more time. I mean, I, I, I love Steph Curry, and I love Clay Thompson and the Draymond Green. Um, but, man, I, I don't know, man. It's still LeBron. You know, it's almost like, you know, Tom Brady, he, you know, is going up against the greatest. So, you know, just got to be a fan of the game and enjoy it, man. I think it's going to be one of the greatest finals, and I'll be proud of both sides, uh, regardless of who wins. All right, hey, Mike, it's been a pleasure to have you on this show. Man, I've been a big fan of yours for years, man. You you was my childhood, man, for seeing you out there playing for the Falcons, man. So it's good to have you on the show, man. Look forward to doing it again real soon, brother. You be, you be stay up, man. I'll be, be, be got support in the Boss Man Show. No doubt. Thank you, man. Appreciate no it. doubt. Folks, that's Mike right. Big here on the Boss Man Show. All your photo, video, and voiceover needs, check out the fine folks at Blu ray Productions. They will take good care of you. If you don't believe me, you can see for yourself. Check out their work at blueberryproductions.tv, the Facebook page, Blueberry Productions, also a Vimeo page, a YouTube page, and it's Blueberry, B L U B E R R Y, prod on Twitter. Check them out today. Blueberry Productions, great people, great work, great service. Fantasy football season is fast approaching, and if you're looking for an edge this season, you need to contact the guys at Draft Day Consultants. The concept is a simple one. Draft Day Consultants takes your requests and connects you with one of their trusted analysts, who then guide you through your draft, whether you just need a sounding board on decisions, or if you need them to conduct your entire draft. Draft Day Consultants has you covered. Every one of their consultants has a proven track record of success, and have conducted hundreds, even thousands of mock drafts. Thanks to this year-round research and analysis, the guys at DDC have an unmatched understanding of player values. So gain an edge on your league mates this season by hitting up DraftDayConsultants.com. That's www.DraftDayConsultants.com. Now get after it, fantasy footballers. Hip-hop fans, I got a great album for you. The debut album from Family Grind ENT, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip-hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, IllStreetRex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody, Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. 
So come out today. True speech and three one three fresh family grind E N T. Believe in it, get it. Hello, my name is Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Once again, www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach TWheel24 or Instagram Travis L. Williams24. Or you can call me at 404 542 607. Once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Boss Man Radio Show covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you. We're back here in the Jarrah the Boss Man Show. We're joined by a new coach of the Decane Dukes, Keith Dembrot, here on the Boss Man Show. Coach, how's life in Pittsburgh for you, man? Love it. It's been great. Great city, great school. Really feel like we can make some progress and win a lot of games here. Now, Coach, I know you was at Akron for a good long while there and decided to make the move in here to Duquesne. So, Coach, talk to me about what about the opportunity at there at Duquesne? Duquesne really can still do what you say, hey, let me take this job here, leave the Duke, so try something new in my career here. Well, it was a hard decision because, obviously, I'm from Akron. It's where my kids went to school, where I went to college, uh, all my friends and family. But my dad played at Duquesne. And uh, when my dad played, they were the best team in the country. And uh, I think uh, it was a challenge because they haven't won. And I just felt like at this point, career fit and old, I thought it was the best best time to try to take on a new challenge. I understand. I hear that, Coach. And, Coach, now, so far with your new team, Coach, if you get on the court with them a little bit, kind of see what, see what you have before you go out and try to recruit guys that bring to your program. So how, how are you feeling about the guys you have coming back so far? Well, you know, we, 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 we lost a lot of guys and obviously they haven't won a lot of games here. So, you know, we had to go out, we got eight new players, four of which can play right now, four are going to transfer in and sit. So we're going to play with nine guys this year. So that's going to be a challenge, but at the same token, uh, you know, we feel like we could get it done here. Most definitely, Coach. And, Coach, you have a great situation. You're in a great city. You know, a lot of a lot of guys in Northeast area, you can go, go recruit guys to come play for you. So, after this year, we can get back out on the recruiting trail and get guys for 18 and 19. What kind of guys are you going to kind of target to bring to your program to help you build the, the Dukes back up to where they want to be and have a, a, a foothold in the Northeast area has been a key player for college basketball players to come play at? Well, I think the biggest thing is is uh, we have to be a combination. In the Atlantic Ten, you've got teams like Rhode Island, Dayton, uh, VCU that are super athletic, and then you have some real cerebral teams like Davidson, uh, Richmond, a lot of different styles of play in this league. And so I think we have to be a combination of two, being a small Catholic school. we got to be got to get some really smart guys, and then we got to have some high end as well. And coach, for my listeners who are not familiar with your style of play and how you coach, uh, what kind of style of play do you plan on employing with, with your guys this year and beyond? And coach, you kind of feel like with you plan on having nine guys on your roster, you have to kind of play a different way to kind of save their legs and not go all out and just press that kind of protect the guys you have on the court with you that can't play this year? Well, I think the one thing that's kind of unique about me is I've coached at all levels, whether it's 
uh, NAIA head coach, Division II head coach. I've been a mid-major uh, head coach. So I've played with big people, you know, where we played inside out. I played with no big people at all when I was an NAIA coach. and spread out. I pressed and run when I was at Ashland. So uh, I like to play man-to-man. I like to play up-tempo. I like to throw the ball inside. But I think I'm capable of playing any which way depending on our talent level. Exactly, and that's that's one big, big big thing, good coach. A lot of some coaches don't want to change it. The fact that you that you know you can change and put different styles is good for you and good for your style because you can recruit any any kind of player, not just one kind of guy, and be stuck with that only kind of style. You can coach all kind of styles and and have a different kind of team every year if, if you so choose to. Yeah, that's true. I mean, uh, obviously, there's some ways I prefer to play. Uh, again, I like to throw the ball inside, which is kind of old school. We had a 330-pound center. This was an honorable mention All-American, but I also had guys like LeBron that, you know, you just kind of let loose. And so I've been able to, you know, I've been fortunate to be around a lot of good players, and we all know that's the key to all of this, get good players. You got that right, Coach. And, if, and having only nine guys on your roster, Coach, this comes coming year that you can actually play, non-common schedule-wise, is it already done for you? Or, but if you have some options to, to play some games, you're kind of trying to get some guys, get some confidence doing it. You only got nine guys. And as you go forward, Coach, are you an aggressive, aggressive schedule? Or are you a guy that wants to get some mean wins you can before conference play starts? Well, we're in a unique situation, really. I, you know, uh, this program has been a little shell shocked throughout the years. In the last 41 years, they've only had like eight winning seasons. So we have to make sure that we get built some confidence, keep the buzz going here. Because back in the 50s, it was the best program in the country, and now they've hit some hard times. So we'll monitor our schedule relatively closely, but as soon as we get good enough, we'll play anybody in the country just like we did at Act. And, and coach, so speaking of that, speaking of playing, playing at Akron, you're, you're playing Akron. Do you feel like it, how you had success at Akron will help you get guys to come play for you? Because I feel like your winning pedigree at Akron and what you did there is, is, is you can't can't deny what you did at Akron. And when you go sit in a kid's room and talk to kid on the phone, and they see your resume, look you look you up. They have to say, hey, this guy can get, get, help me win, he can become a better man, become a better person, have me be a better citizen after my basketball career is over with. Well, I think, yeah, I think two things we sell is one, the connection with LeBron. I think that's a big deal. I think, uh, you know, we've, we've, we're one of the few teams in the country, four teams, I think, that have won at least 21 games for 12 straight years. So we've proven we can win. Now we got to fight the battle at Duquesne and sell the dream that Duquesne can win. And honestly, I wouldn't have come here if I didn't think Duquesne could win. We have an outstanding athletic director. We have a good president. The school's tired of losing. We have an unbelievable city. Uh, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't win. I hear that. And, Coach, you talk about LeBron James. Uh, how, 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 I've, I've been a few times to come play Atlanta Hawks. I've met him a few times. So, how is he as, as a guy? And what has he been meant to you personally in your career? And what has he meant to, to your program at Akron? And what, what, how you plan on having to integrate him as you go to Duquesne now? Well, I love LeBron. I don't know if there's a better player person in the world. But, I mean, he, he's committed to people that have been good to him. He cares about us. Uh, he cares about the city of Akron. And he's an unbelievable teammate. And, you know, look, we're one of two teams that have a LeBron James shoe deal, equipment deal, and that's us in Ohio State. So, you know, we're very fortunate to have that affiliation with him. And, uh, he's just a wonderful person. Yeah, he's always been a cool guy to talk to. He'll, he'll shake my hand, speak to me after doing pregame and postgame. So I, I had to get out of doing better. You know, he's a, definitely a cool guy. And, Coach, uh, Let's think of LeBron and his Cavs. Uh, think they're going to be Golden State this year in the finals, Coach? You think they're going to get them again? Even though the Golden State has Durant, West, uh, Curry, Clay Thompson, all those guys out there. Well, if he if he can beat that lineup, then he truly is one of the best of all time, I would say. And uh, that allows him to chase that ghost even more if he can beat that team. So that team, that team has no business losing to anyone. You got there, right? That's a heck of a He does that. He'd be probably to be the goat of all time. Now, Coach, been in Pittsburgh now, Coach, uh, with Duquesne. If you reach out to Coach Mike Tomlin, I know he's a great guy to talk to. We've had him down here on the show with Atlanta. If you reach out to him, the Steelers a little bit, talk to him, and the Penguins kind of, you know, get, uh, Coach Coach in town to kind of get some feedback and help you around there and get the program some buzz as well. Well, obviously, unbelievable respect for Coach Tomlin and what he's done, uh, you know, unbelievable coach and person. 
I haven't really got to see him yet. I've been so busy just trying to put this thing back together that that really all I've been doing is working. <laughs> and uh, speaking of that, Coach, so let's kind of give us a little behind the scenes. When you become a new coach or a new program coach, how much of a whirlwind is it to get everything good, good to do for us, hiring our staff, you know, recruiting, meeting people and meets? So talk to us a little bit. How, how was that transition when you can go from one place to another coach and take over a new program? Well, this has been a battle. I mean, we've, we've had to really work on our infrastructure and teach them how to, you know, to, to, to win, you know, it goes all the way from housing to food to equipment you know, what it takes to be a big winner. And I'll, I'll tell you this, uh, our school and our president and our athletic group have given us everything we need to win. Now it's just a matter of getting good players and selling that dream. And when you sell that dream, you, you know, you got to believe it yourself, and I believe it. And, Coach, uh, before you go, of course, before you go, so what, what are you and staff planning on doing as you rest of the summer to, to kind of build that chemistry amongst yourself and, and your guys on the team and, and amongst the guys themselves to kind of get get them ready for that tip-off day in October when you get ready to practice and get ready to play ball in November? So what, how are you going to do for us building the chemistry with the, everybody and then the program going forward? Well, I think the, the biggest thing is you got to change that culture and that belief structure that you can win basketball games. And then teach them how to win games. And that is, hey, you play unbelievable defense and you share the ball and you become a team and not a bunch of individuals. So, you know, that that takes time. You have to you have to build that. You have to spend time with the guys. They have to believe in you and you have to believe in them. And really you gotta get all that poison, all that losing out of their system so they understand that they can be winners. I hear that. Well, Coach, thank you so much for your time this evening, Coach. Really appreciate you coming on the show. Look forward to having you on again down and down down the line, Coach, and good luck to you with the program. We'll definitely be watching, keeping up with and cheering for you guys at Duquesne, Coach. Appreciate you. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Let's first keep down right here on the Boss Man Show. All your photo, video, and voiceover needs, check out the fine folks at Blu-ray Productions. They will take good care of you. If you don't believe me, you can see for yourself. Check out their work at blueberryproductions.tv, the Facebook page, Blueberry Productions, also a Vimeo page, a YouTube page, and it's Blueberry, B-L-U-B-E-R-R-Y, prod on Twitter. Check them out today. Blueberry Productions, great people, great work, great service. Fantasy football season is fast approaching, and if you're looking for an edge this season, you need to contact the guys at Draft Day Consultants. The concept is a simple one. Draft Day Consultants takes your requests and connects you with one of their trusted analysts, who then guide you through your draft, whether you just need a sounding board on decisions or if you need them to conduct your entire draft. Draft Day Consultants has you covered. Every one of their consultants has a proven track record of success and have conducted hundreds, even thousands of mock drafts. Thanks to this year-round research and analysis, the guys at DDC have an unmatched understanding of player values. So gain an edge on your league mates this season by hitting up DraftDayConsultants.com. That's www.DraftDayConsultants.com. Now get after it, fantasy footballers. Hip-hop fans, I got a great album for you. The baby album from Family Grind ENT, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip-hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, IllStreetRex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody, Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today, True Speech and 313 Fresh, Family Grind ENT. Believe in it, get it. Hello, my name is Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academics.com and athletics 
www.academicsandathletics.academicsandathletics.com. Once again, www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach TWheel24 or Instagram Travis L. Williams24. Or you can call me at 404 542 607. Once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Boss Man Radio Show covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you. on the JR the Boss Man Show. Had a great show for you already. We had NFL legend, former Atlanta Falcon, Mike Vick here on the Boss Man Show. We had Keith Dumbrock, the coach of the Duquesne Dukes up in Pittsburgh. But now we go down to my home state of Florida. It's time for this email with Jay Monique. Jay, what is good? Hello, hello, hello. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, back from another line of emails, Jay. Uh, we put them out of the mailbag in today. I think they're going to be pretty horrible. And uh, how are you feeling about knowing that we got to read five bad emails most likely on today's email segment? I think I'm over bracing myself <laughs> for the unknown right now. Because <laughs> I've been traumatized for like the last couple of weeks, so I'm like, uh-oh. Yes, and I can only imagine what we have today, so fire them away. Let's get into them. Listener email, Batista and John Ford. Oh, wow. <laughs> it is the entering the season of warm. I'm troubled by the resistance of shown but some. Beal scanner should alert them to the computer compound issue of the resistance shown. Suave, Dope, and Lehigh, you think? Mario and Buffalo. What the hell is that, Mario? That's that's much of nothing, my man. What does it even mean? Like, okay, I guess I guess it's getting to summer, right? The season of warm. I, my man, simple. Just say summer. Summer, my man. It's getting to be summer, okay? <laughs> but the resistance of the show, but some, but what? Bell scanner, alert them with a computer compound issue. I, my man, you're speaking in tongues or something to me. I don't know what the crap is, and I don't know what suave, dope, and Lehigh means. Mario, I don't think. You don't think either, Mark. You would have sent us this bad email if you thought, Mario. Mario and Buffalo, my man. I thought you had to warm up there. You ain't got to do with snow plows and ice all day. But my man, please get your mind right. Because I'm always asking you, sir, what's your deal now? I don't get that. I'm going to let Jay try to break it down for me because I'm lost. So, Jay, let him know. I don't know what he wants. <laughs> oh, Lord. Now I have to uh, <laughs> decode this garbled. <laughs> First of all, let me start off here. Who the hell is Bill Scanner? <laughs> Did I miss something? Do you know who Bill Scanner is, Buzz? I sure the hell don't. <laughs> I was going to say, is this a new scanner that, like, does everything? I mean, what, what you mean, Bill Scanner? <laughs> <laughs> is it a person? Is it a brand of a manufacturer? What are you talking about? Yeah. 
I'm done. And just like Bob said, you ain't got to do all that. It's not you. You ain't got to be all extra. You're not impressing nobody. It is entering the season of warm. What are you trying to do? Sound educated or something? You think you're better than everybody? It's entering the season of warm. We know that. We've been outside, bro. <laughs> exactly. We're aware of that. Every like May, June, July is quote season of warm. August, September. Now, no, in Buffalo, it might be at Long Buffalo because y'all up there by Canada. I don't know how y'all weather pattern is up there, in up there by the Arctic. But down south, it's always a season of warm, my man, from about February on. So I don't know what you're talking about. I'm my man. I already been in the quote season of warm, my man. Please, spring and summer, my man. Please, spring, summer. Please. <laughs> exactly. Just keep it simple, Mario. So uh, kick the bricks. And move on. Because <laughs> your email, next time send a better email. So we actually understand. Because we don't know what you're talking about. Thank you. Listener email. Roma and Mahogany. Oh, Lord. Jesus Christ. What's up with these people talking about the season? <laughs> the spring is the seeding into gravel in which the path to the consistency of partnership seems to have hit a path road blockage. Whilst... And it has the S P at the end, by the way. While attempting to project proper passion, psychology, and activity, humans are unable to process, which confirms the vision odds, which theoretically hard to elude, thus ending togetherness. Understand spring and leap into summer. Fabio. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Sir, what's your deal? <laughs> I'm like, my man, like, what are you trying to try to write a novel to the show? Trying to write a novel in the form of email? Like my man. I don't know what you first of all I'm done at the spring to see into, into, into gravel? What? What does that mean? How does a quote season go into gravel? They don't. <laughs> in which the path to consistency of partnership seems to have hit a path for or are you and a female or a male of got are at odds with each other now? Is that what you're trying to tell me? And to project proper passion, psychology, and activity. So whoever you're with don't understand your your brain. I, I don't get your brain either, my man. I, I'm I'm with them on that. Passion, I, I don't want to get involved in your passion. Activity, I don't want to know about it, brother. I'm good. Was conferring division and odds, which are theoretically hard to elude, thus any togetherness. Yes, my man. I, if you talk like that to a woman or a male, they will leave you too, and they should. I don't want to try to talk in old English code. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Or literature, my man? You're not Shakespeare. You're Shakespeare. You're fake. You're fake ass George Michael. Get out of here. How about Shakespeare? Shakespeare. It's like fake talk I hear about that, and fake yeah. talk show I hear about. <laughs> Who interviews? Yeah. Oh Lord! <laughs> oh Lord! I know who you're talking about, though. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah my, my man Fabio. Whoever you are, my man, get your mind right, please. Fabio, I really hope that you don't talk like this in real life. Like, please tell me that you don't actually talk like you're reading from Romeo and Juliet or something like what are you doing what are you trying to prove like dude this is not psychology class it's just sending a simple email so it's like you're trying to just overdo when you could have just kept it simple because I don't know half of what you're saying to be honest with you so I don't even know how to respond to you but you need to just how about this talk like a normal human being Fabio because nobody knows anything about spring is deceiving into gravel what are you what are you talking about? You trying to become an English professor or something? I think you should keep your day job, bro. <laughs> thank you. Thank it's you. Not Fabio. Working. Fabio is terrible. I, I have no idea about the spring season in the ground, but that I was done at that, that since I was done. Finish. Finito. <laughs> done. <laughs> Dude, for real. And then at the end, understand spring and leap in the summer. What are you talking about? Like, do you actually mean that? Or is this some type of metaphor or some analogy? What are you talking? What? <laughs> That's terrible. Man, Fabio, put some respect on my email. Okay. I've been radio show. It's not for you to write poetry or literature to me. Or Jay. We don't want to hear that crap. 
you he email holla at bossmanshow.com, send us a simple email. I ain't gonna say it no more. No put more. Some, put some respect on our email, Fabio. Come back on it. That's right. And by the way, Fabio, we're we're not Roma and Mahogany. There's nobody by those names here at all. Exactly. Bye, Fabio. Joe, listener email, Joe R and Ron B. <laughs> what? I like you Mexicans. What? I'm learning to like your kind. I find this radio thing on my son device. He listened to podcast and that was a G, not a D. You foreigners don't speak on driving and six left. Do I need help to you? I reckon I do. James in Alabama. P.S. You got some dumb listeners. I reckon I can make them more smart. I knew to foreign folk. I start to understand you Mexican. You mean, you talk about yourself, James. You're a dumb listener, James. <laughs> you talk about yourself, my man. You're talking about Mexicans. What do you mean? Like, what is driving in stick slap? What the hell is that? Yeah, I got some dumb listeners like you, James. Yes, you're one of my dumb listeners. I agree. I agree. There are listeners who are dumb. There's some I know better than others who are very dumb. But you're doing the dumbest, James. And what part of Alabama are you? Are you in like some kind of cornfield? Are you like way off somewhere that we can't find you? Because me and Jay aren't Mexicans, my man. And don't be racial in your emails, Michelle. Put me stuck on email again. Don't be racial. You gotta say you say do you like us Mexicans? We're not Mexicans, but say you like the show. Mm-hmm. Don't gonna be about nobody's race, James Alabama. You hillbilly. <laughs> <laughs> you got overalls and a straw hat. Don't wear no shoes, Billy. You don't wear no shoes now, huh? You all in the field, huh? You know juvenile, juvenile visa with me, easy, huh? Body clean. Get out of here, man. So non typing, self wrecking. Like you was, you need to be on. You're a NASCAR where he's wrecking. I reckon. I do it. Get out of here. To your, to your tobacco, deal whatever you do, Copenhagen. Get the hell out of here, man. Get your mind right. What's your deal, fool? Okay. It's like chains in Alabama. What do you mean? It's like you talking about you like Mexicans. Okay, so do we, but. We're not Mexican. So, first of all, you talk about some dumb listeners. You one of them because we're not Mexican. So, you couldn't even get our race right. So, you shouldn't have brought race into it. You can make them more smart. No, you can't. You're going to make them even dumber. James in Alabama. I mean, I'm learning to like your kind. So, what do you mean? You didn't like Mexicans before? I'm starting to get offended now, and I'm not Mexican. What do you mean you're starting to like your kind? I mean, what, Mexicans aren't to be liked? Yeah, like you're, you're starting to come off as a little bit racist, James in Alabama. Yeah, his take is pretty off. Like, dude, your your undertones, my man, are very apparent. See, so, my man, I, we, we can say we don't like hillbillies. It's just spit back on that on winning shoe. We're not saying that, my man. You're, you're, you are don't, don't offend my listeners, because James, I will say, you want to dumb listeners we have, James. Okay, I agree. <laughs> Go to hell. <laughs> and don't come back. Powerful. Listener email. Samuel D. Bossman and William or Wilma C. Johnson. Wow. I made a decision to cut away from the desire of outpriced things. I'm unaware of low price things and their marketers. Divorce and bankruptcy are sizzling the slack flow seat away. In your show radio way alert me on the fellowship and Pop on, pop on the cure of consumed choices to survive. Bishop Kevin Raymond in D.C. by way of outside water. What? By way of what? Water. By way of outside. First of all, my man, where's quote outside water? I can't get past that right there. What in the hell is outside water? Is that like a hose pipe, a fire hydrant, a water fountain? What does that mean? How are you, quote, by way of, is that a river, a lake, an ocean? What do you mean by that, my man? Outside water. <laughs> I don't understand. It's my man. You, you 
make decisions to make cut make cuts because you're going through a divorce. Obviously, you ain't got no more money. I got you, my man. Uh, I can tell you, shop at Walmart, CBS, uh, Dodge, Tree Dollar General, all these. You know, I hate those dumb baskets with the quarter in them. Uh, what else is cheap? Uh, what else is cheap, Jay? I don't, I don't know. Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree, Dollar General. Yeah, all that crap. That's how they save your money, my man. Uh, get Roku or Fire Stick. Uh, steel Wi-Fi, steel cable, all that stuff, man. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know, man. Go, go, go to your, lo- go to the hood. They look at my man. Go, to, go to your local barbershop. They got you covered. The barbershop yep. ha- has every illegal shady way to get over. They got it at the barbershop. Oh my god. <laughs> go to the barbershop. You don't know how to do illegal shady, shady stuff and get over. Go to the barbershop because at the barbershop, I sell you some clothes, CDs, movies, bread. Detergent, Roku's, Fire Sticks, TVs. The barber shop in the hood got you covered, my man. And once again, I don't know what you mean by way of outside water. I don't want to even know. My man, just go to hell, get your mind right, and uh, pray for yourself. Oh, my gosh. Um, but, yeah, um, yeah, I do have to agree with as far as the uh, getting the low price items. Also, if you need your car fixed, do not go corporate. Do not go to those big dealerships. To get anything mechanically done to your car, you're gonna have to go to T-Bone in them. Find you a T-Bone, Peaches, um, who else? Tyro, Junebug, that's a big one. Book. Junebug will hook your car up on the low, low, okay? Got that right. Yes. And, uh, and yeah, you can get, um, you definitely need to save on your cable bill, so definitely, like Boss said, get you an Amazon Fire Stick, get you Roku and stuff like that. You pay like one time, and you get to watch whatever you want to without having to worry about a monthly cable bill. So that will, you know, cut, you know, cut your expenses right there. Grocery shopping, you can go to, like, uh, Aldi, Walmart, you know, definitely make sure there's a sale going on. Sometimes at Publix or when dixie they have buy one, get one free. Uh, you better start clipping some coupons or find some online deals. Sometimes going on Amazon.com, you can find, like, the online deals, especially if you sign up for Amazon Prime. It is going to cost you about $99 for the year, but you get that free two-day shipping. And you get first dibs on some of the sales going on, especially during the holidays, such as Black Friday and things like that. Uh, but I don't know what you mean by outside water. Maybe he was laying out by the beach when he emailed you. Uh, and that's scary if you was. <laughs> <laughs> Get probably in that last tail with his, 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 kicking his feet up like, you know what, let me go ahead and email the boss man show. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that scary. You should not be thinking about me while you're in your trunks by the water. <laughs> let's say, let's say, yeah, let's a bad take is going on. You want to report a bad take incident on to me? But other than that, no. Um, that's all I can say as far as the advice. Is actually, I mean, despite the fact it was a uh, very long window, just a little bit confusing, and the names were not right, it was actually easier to decode than the other two that were just read. <laughs> very much so. All right, so good day, Bishop. Listen to our email. Boss and schedule sizzler. Who the heck is a schedule sizzler? What? <laughs> what does that even mean, first of all? <laughs> Who in the hell is that? All right, the email gets worse. The email go here, thanks. The last email. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. <laughs> you butcher her name. The email go here. Thank. What does that mean? <laughs> like, are you trying to do a sample email? It's like, a, it's like a sample email for somebody. You sent it to me on accident. Like, what does that mean? What is that? Why? Why was that sent? To, why was that even sent? Whoever you are, they, look. I have no name. I have no town. Is this? Okay, nor do they have a reason for emailing the email go here. Yes, we know you're supposed to email here, but why did you send that? <laughs> oh, my God. That's terrible. <laughs> okay, before I think I didn't know, that's the worst email today right there. That's the worst email today. I'm sorry, this is. <laughs> Just the idea that you put boss and schedule sizzler, the email go here, thanks, without a, a sanitation or an ending or closing, what in the hell? Or even a reason. <laughs> like, at least these other four emails had a semi-reason for emailing. Not that I understand what that reason was. They have some reason that they felt in their heart, but this email, what? The 
email go here. Thanks. What? Mm-mm. And they call me a scheduled sizzler. Oh, no. I don't know what that even means. That's... I can't decode that, people. Okay. Nope. That's why I go on a rant and catch myself. Folks. <laughs> before you email, holla at MonsterMoneyShow.com. Holla at MonsterMoneyShow.com. Before you email the email address. Please, I beg of you. Think about your take before you give it to me. Because had you thought about your take once you hear my response, you would be like, dang, I should email it send, send it over to him. No, you shouldn't have. How about getting our names right? They're not home. They're not. But I was called Roma. She's called Mahogany, <laughs> Joe, and Schedule Sizzler, Samuel Day Bossman, Wilma. Where are you hearing this crap at? <laughs> I want to know the same darn thing, to be honest. It's like, how how hard is this? I'm not trying to throw shade at anybody, but how hard is this? Our, both of our names are fairly simple. I mean, it's Boss Man or Boss, and J Monique or J. I don't get it. Or you can even just put the letter J. But don't call me Mahogany and Schedule Sizzler and Wilma. Yeah. Who's Wilma? This ain't the Flintstone. What is going on? Exactly. When you type your email, can you just check it? <laughs> How about this? Read your email to yourself. Out loud, too. But the problem with that is, Jay, the problem that may be is they read it to themselves, but they still have the same tape once they say read it to themselves. And still push in. Yeah, and they still push in. Or treat others how you would want to be treated. It's like, folks, think of, think about this. Would you want to receive an email like that? <laughs> like, okay, I'm going to go to the worst besides the worst email today. Okay. Okay, if you got an email like for Mario or Fabio, would you want that? Exactly. I'm going to ignore James' racist ass. I'm going to ignore James. I reckon. <laughs> would, would, would you want an email from Mario or Fabio coming to your inbox? When they, you know, they want to hit your spam inbox. Or your trash. Mm-hmm. Right, come on, people. Oh, yes. Please. Put some respect on our email. I ain't going to say it no more. Put some no respect more. on my email. So before we close up, Jay, what is your take on today's emails? What, what is your capsulating thoughts on today's email. Oh, God. These people almost made me not have any thoughts, but I definitely have to say um, that besides the email that really had no email, talk about some of the email go here, the person with no name and no city. Um, oh, gosh. That's kind of a tough one. I have to say James, <laughs> to me, was like the second to worst email this week because of the racist comment or, um, that he tried to portray it on below. And he insulted y'all listeners, too. Yeah, he can't talk. Look, I know a guy who thinks that's literally is, is, a, is, a, is in a bathtub as smart as you, James, okay? <laughs> oh. There's a guy I know that thinks that, you know, you know that Jeff Columbus is a person as smart as you, James. I'm just saying. Oh, God. I'm just saying, brother. So, folks. This is what's email segment. Send the emails again, hotboxmanshow.com. It's Boss and Jay. After break is my man with the Boss Report, J.C. Smith, coming up next for you, people. Get ready for it. We out. All your photo, video, and voiceover needs, check out the fine folks at Blu-ray Productions. They will take good care of you. If you don't believe me, you can see for yourself. Check out their work at blueberryproductions.tv, the Facebook page, Blueberry Productions, also a Vimeo page, a YouTube page, and it's Blueberry, B-L-U-B-E-R-R-Y, 
Squad on Twitter. Check them out today. Blueberry Productions, great people, great work, great service. Fantasy football season is fast approaching, and if you're looking for an edge this season, you need to contact the guys at Draft Day Consultants. The concept is a simple one. Draft Day Consultants takes your requests and connects you with one of their trusted analysts, who then guide you through your draft, whether you just need a sounding board on decisions or if you need them to conduct your entire draft. Draft Day Consultants has you covered. Every one of their consultants has a proven track record of success and have conducted hundreds, even thousands of mock drafts. Thanks to this year-round research and analysis, the guys at DDC have an unmatched understanding of player values. So gain an edge on your league mates this season by hitting up DraftDayConsultants.com. That's www.DraftDayConsultants.com. Now get after it, fantasy footballers. Hip-hop fans, I got a great album for you. The baby album from Family Grind ENT, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip-hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, illstreetrex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody, Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today, True Speech, and 313 Fresh, Family Grind ENT. Believe in it. Get it. Hello, my name is Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academics and athleticsconsulting.com. Once again, www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach T Wheel 24 or Instagram Travis L. Williams 24. Or you can call me at 404 542 607. Once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Bossman Radio Show, covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you. Show we talked to Atlanta Falcons legend Mike Vick here on the show. Duquesne Dukes coach Keith Dembrock. Jay Monique with the email. So now it means to go down. I'm gonna go across I 20 and hit I 22 right to Memphis, Tennessee to my man, the PD Karaoke. Friday night, Saturday night, doing his thing. Three Kings, trust us records. It's JC Smith. What's good, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, boss? Hey, man, I need I need some theme music when I come on, man, for my segment. I need some theme music, bro. Tell me, what song would you like me to play for you, my man, when you come on the air, man? You know what? You know what I need, man. I need some of that Charlie Low. They know. That Charlie Low. They know. <laughs> they know. I need that, man. I am. I need that Charlie Low. <laughs> yes, sir. The way that the way that beat, the way it comes in, man. I need that in my life, bro. We got you. Hey, we will definitely make that the J.C. Smith theme song would be, they know he yeah. is the man. <laughs> hey. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's do it. No doubt. Well, folks, you've been waiting on it. It's time for it. It's here. It's the boss report. All right, first story, bro, is this. Georgia police officers are suspended after being caught in broad daylight with one officer giving that top to a fellow officer while doing a robbery in progress across the street. 
Yo, I think I heard about this story, man. Matter of fact, I think I saw a video uh, of this story, man. You know what? I, okay, now, if there's a robbery going on at the same, the same time, you do have to kind of stop what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Go and, and do your job. But at the same time, I ain't mad at them, man. Everybody's had, everybody's had that one situation with a uh, uh, co-worker of the opposite sex. You know, you know, you got a little thing for them, man. And things just happen, man. Things just happen in the workplace sometimes. So I can't, I can't knock them. The only thing I'm gonna knock them for is that if there was a crime going on, man, you gotta stop what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Pull your pants up, get up off your knees. You know what I'm saying? And go, and go handle it, man. Go get the bag, you guys. I can't believe it. And we have a Florida crazies. Gracie Grandpa acquitted of murder after his bay allegedly choked to death on his supersized slong. Now say what now? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> okay. Now say what? We got, we got a Florida crazies. Gracie Grandpa acquitted of murder after his bay allegedly choked to death on his supersized slong. Wow. Wow, man. So what you're saying is she got the killer D. Yeah. She choked on the D <laughs> and took a hill. She ended up in a casket over t- t- sucking some D. <sighs> hey, man, just think about how much that would stroke your ego. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> to say that somebody, that somebody choked to death. Wow. Well, my nigga was chewing on, on, your, on your slong, man. Think of, think of how, you, you the man, come on now, you the man. Like, of course you're dead at first to die, but come on, man. Like, you walking around, like, that guy, he needs his own theme music. I don't know what song it would be, but anytime he walks around, everywhere he goes, he needs fault. his own theme music, man. The D did that, the remix. My- <laughs> <laughs> the D did that! So, so, you know what, you might have something. Yeah, you might have something, man. Yeah, that guy, that guy's a hero. <laughs> he's a, he's a, looks like a Paul Bunyan character right now, man. Exactly. And we have more D news here. Wall Street Hamptons bachelors are getting vasectomies, so Long Island gold diggers can't trap them with babies and take their money. Mmm. Mm, you know what? I've been thinking about doing it myself, man. Go ahead and get the slip slip. So I make sure I won't have any more little uh little juniors or uh junior X uh running around out here, man. But hey, you got you gotta protect yourself, man. They they be trying to stick you for your paper out here, man. So I ain't mad at them at all, man. And like, you know, that's how they get down in Long Island, man. You know, the women they trying to trap you, they trying to get you for your money, man, your four oh one K. And all that good stuff, man. So the guys got to do what they got to do, man. Go ahead and snip it up, man. You better believe it. And we have this Florida man arrested after throwing medical marijuana party with 55 pounds of weed due to promoting it on Instagram and posting flyers around town. Man, it's like a, uh, a scene from a movie, ain't it? What's <laughs> like a movie? It did the same thing, man, but... Uh, yeah, you can't be promoting it, man. Like, if you're going to promote it, you're going to do it, you know, privately, or, you know, behind the scenes, man. You can't be all on Instagram talking about you having a medical marijuana party. You just have to get busted. Exactly. Like, come on. You, you know the fans be watching. Two chains told you that. Already. Man. Well, Utah woman arrested after locking her kids in the trunk of a hot car to protect them while she went to shop for TJ Maxx for Summer 17 clothing. Okay, Utah, she locked them in the trunk. Why couldn't she just take them to the store? Exactly. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't get that. Like, I don't understand that one. Yeah, it's, it's not like it's super hot in Utah or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I know it wasn't like a heat-related issue. You know what I'm saying? Watch the guy in the trunk. That, yeah, that, that one don't make no sense right there, man. She could just took him in the store. Exactly. Like, it's TJ Maxx. Not like he's going somewhere, like, adult yeah. friendly only. Like, you going to TJ Maxx. Right. A discount or, yeah. retail store. Yeah. Like, you expect badass kids to be running around, tearing up clothes in TJ Maxx. I could see if he was going up in 
Neiman Marcus or some high-end retail store. You like you don't want your kids coming in. They may be some badass kids. They may tear up the store. But still, I man, it's TJ Maxx, man. Like that's expected for uh, folks that have badass kids to come in and tear the store up. Exactly. And we have this Florida man arrested after hitting his brother in the face with a paint gun during an argument over dirty dishes and stolen condoms. Wow, well, I mean, have you ever been just shot with a paint, a paint gun? I have not. Oh, man, it's the worst, man. Like, I have before, man. It, it leaves, like, whelps and marks on your body, man. Cause that, it's coming at you so fast, man. So it's going to leave a mark on you, man. But I don't know if that's, if, if that's worthy enough to get, you know, the only condoms and dirty dishes is worthy enough to get shot with a BB gun. You know, I think that's a little hard. But, um... Hey man, like condoms cost they cost a the grip these days, man. Like a three pack, you gonna pay about a good five or six dollars for them. So I can see you'll be upset about this. Yeah, you sure will. Like, see me, I was gonna go to Walmart, buy that ten pack, you know, for yeah. seven ninety six, whatever it costs. Yeah, something like that. Yes, sir. You know, whatever it is, seven ninety six. So yeah, I get that. But come on, man. Come over, come on, dirty dishes, man. Look, sometimes we need this this chill. Like, gee, like, you ain't that crucial. No doubt. <laughs> no doubt, man. For real, man. Yeah, go go get the magnum. You know what I'm saying? Get three, three, or three, or three in the pack, three in the whole thing for like $6, man. You know what I'm saying? And you in there. But, but if you, if you, if you're a guy and, you, and, you, and you're not magnum equipped, then go get the, uh, get the Trojans, man. Or if you're really sad, go to, go to the health department. There you go. That too. That too, man. Get you. Yeah, they give that free condoms all the time, man. Go go to the health department. Hell, yeah, the health department did not respect the man that's not a Vienna sausage. They don't respect non Vienna sausage. <laughs> they don't respect us. <laughs> <laughs> we're not. Man, we're, we're, we're not respected there. We're not. <laughs> yeah, you fool, man. Here we go. Georgia woman arrested, leaving her seven kids at the Motel 6 while she hopped the flight to Miami to link up with a dude she met from a Facebook group. Okay, all right, so she hopped the flight to Miami, and where was she from originally? Atlanta. She, was seven, she had seven kids. From Atlanta. Left her at the Motel 6 by and the she airport. Got, she got seven of them. Yes. She need her ass arrested. Not eight. How in the hell are you gonna leave? Not one, not two, not three, not four, five, six. You got seven of them in the Motel Six and act like everything all good. Like you go to Miami to <laughs> like probably give a dude. Up. You go to Miami to give a dude some. Maybe get eight put in here. Like because you all hey, you know right. you had no birth control because you got seven kids. Yeah, man. Like nah, that's. That's the worst mother of the year right there, fam. I mean, all right, if it, if it was that crucial, you ain't got no family members. I mean, well, I know it's hard to get a family member to, to watch seven kids, let alone one kid. But, I mean, it's got to be somebody you, that can watch the kids for. You can't leave them in a Motel 6 all by yourself. It ain't Mo, it, cause he had Motel, Motel 7. Man, he had Motel 7, not Motel 6. Except, and I question my man in Miami. Why are you importing a Georgia female with seven kids and you already in Miami. To me, that I question him too. Like, why are you importing yeah. a seven kid Georgia or, woman and you in Miami? Or probably um, what's more likely to happen in that situation? He probably didn't know that she had seven kids. When you think about it, he probably didn't know. That. Probably didn't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's that's what I'm thinking. Probably happened. She fronting like you know, like she hiding ready. You know what I'm saying? She can come on down there, and she probably not even, didn't even probably mention the kids, her kids one time. Exactly. Man, that story right there, very complex one. And this is complex, too. Florida woman with the God complex arrested after squatting in $1.3 million house mansion saying, quote, the angel of the Lord bought it for her. <laughs> that uh, that's, that's that's Kanye uh Kanye sister, right? but um, uh, but that that sounds kind of familiar to a story that happened here a couple years ago, where a lady um, um, I think they call themselves is it a uh, sovereign 
sovereign uh, citizens. Um, are, are, you know what? Or better yet, Moorish, uh, uh, Moorish uh, people or whatever. Um, they claim, you know, saying to be sovereign citizens, and and their, their belief is that anything they see or a state claim to is theirs. If nobody else is living there, you know, what I'm saying they feel like it's their property. So it was a story here in Memphis where a lady was squatting in a million dollar mansion off Poplar, I believe, off Poplar Avenue in East Memphis, and she was there for like a, I think about like a week or so before anybody realized that she was there. But she's serving time as we speak right now. She went to jail for that, man. I think she did a couple of years right there. Wow. Wow. Yeah, you wow. know what I'm saying? Like, man, if, if 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 you ain't pay rent or you pay, you ain't paying a mortgage, it is not yours. First of all, only time is your property when you own something. Even when you paying rent, you don't own nothing. Sure don't. Yeah, man. Come on now. Well, here we go. Jesus take the wheel. We have a filthy California gas station nachos paralyzing a woman in the rare food poison outbreak due to nachos that was out for get this 31 hours. Wait a minute, nachos can paralyze you? Yeah, stay out 31 hours. Man, I know it can make you sick. I mean, I've had food poison before, but I didn't know you can't feel your legs after you eat a bad, yes. a bad batch of nachos. Yeah. Oh, no. But, like, all right, if nachos are out for 31 hours, then was it just the nacho cheese that was out? Because if the chips are out that long, it should be stale, right? It was, it was under that damn, uh, uh, that, that, that heat Ooh. light, that light they have. That heat light, yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, well, I know she won't get paid. Uh, whoever, whoever it happened to, it gonna sue. But man, think about that—you get you permanently paralyzed. Eat nachos? That's crazy. It makes you regret ever going. It's like, that is wild. Why man. I even come here to take an ill like this? <laughs> That's crazy, man. Yeah, very. That's wild. Very crazy. And here we go. Florida man is arrested after calling fake robbery to avoid annual evaluation at work. Wow, so he was trying to avoid getting drug tested? Nah, he must didn't like when he was on selling his evaluation. He wasn't going to get a raise. So he tried to oh, 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 like a year in, a year in review. Okay. I got you. I can see you. All right, I'll tell you a story, man. <laughs> I'll tell you a story. Now, I um, I did I didn't do all that, but one job I was working at, I did fake an injury. I faked like I broke my arm in a car accident. And being an actor, the the most actor that I am, I had to play this off for a couple of days, man. So I went to work and everything, had my my arm in the swing, <laughs> act like I was on meditation. It worked. Just so they would, because I was trying to avoid getting fired. You know what I'm saying? So I thought if I take an arm injury, I can work a few more days man, before I get fired, man. But that, they still fired me anyway. So, <laughs> moral of the story is you can't take an injury or take a robbery to avoid, <laughs> to avoid job evaluation. <laughs> you That's the moral of the story. Um, got to love me. Uh, crusty old sea lion yanks up little girl and drags her to a watery hell. Okay, I think I, I remember hearing about this story also. Did this happen in California or Florida? California. California, okay, I remember this one. Yeah. So so the sea lion did this drug the girl to the to the to the water? Mm-hmm. Just jumped up and yeah, got, the, yeah. And jumped to the water. Yeah. You gotta be careful because a lot of people be sitting right there on the edge. You know what I'm saying? Got their back turned mm-hmm. and not realizing what's going on, man. Like the little alligators that snagged the baby in Florida at the Disney World Park. Yeah, you gotta be careful, man. See, I, saw, I don't even mess with sea animals or uh, I don't even mess with the water, man. I, don't, I saw I don't swim, man. You know, just because I don't even want to take no chance of an uh, alligator, uh, a sea lion, a sea otter, a dolphin. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't want to take no chances of no animal taking a chunk out of me or dragging me to the bottom of those. 
I'm at the point now. I, I'm not even too keen on dog dogs no more. Like I don't like cats. Like right. I'm kind of at a point where I'm like anti animal. Like I'm good on animals all together. Like nah, I'm good. No doubt. Like like I'm at a point now. Like okay, quick story. I met a female who has a, a pit bull in her house. Like why I suddenly found a pit bull a house dog. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, was like, nah, I'm sick. good. I'll exit yeah. that real quick. Like, I didn't go back. Like, right. Like, nah, we should have no dang 70 pound pit bull in your house, a house dog, in a three bedroom apartment. Like, nah, that's not what's up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I be a chick, she got a pit bull. Hey, that's the end of it right there. <laughs> <laughs> like, we should be. We can be Facebook friends and stuff like that, but I, I, I ain't never coming to your house. Bruh, I, I look here. I made an excuse like I had to go in an emergency and go to the studio because I wasn't laying in the bed because I found out the dog slept in the bed. with like, nope, I'm not sleeping in the dog here either. I refuse. I am good. I am Gucci. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a wrap, bro. Yeah, so yeah, I'm not on killing animals, so y'all might think with you, bro. Animals and me don't agree. That's how I'm with it. For real. So, we got this. Florida man arrested after being caught pouring a beer in a gator's mouth by Lowe's. Oh, is that is that illegal? I thought, like, I think in Florida, you can do, do that. That should be legal in Florida. It's illegal. I you know what I'm saying? To pour a beer in a gator's mouth by, by Lowe's. You know, it's like, if you that crazy to pour a beer in an alligator's mouth, like, you shouldn't be arrested for that. Like, especially in Florida, that should be like a normal thing that happens every day. Exactly. Like, it's, it's crazy. Like, for real. So, yeah. That, that's, that's one that got me. But here we go right here. We got KO. Montella p- politician Greg Jean Forte arrested after body slamming Garden reporter the day before the election. He ends up still winning the damn election. Uh, <laughs> but is this guy a Trump? Trump supporter? Of course he is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, man. Hey, that's wild. What city was this in? It was the Montana. A special right, Mon- in, in right. Montana. Yeah, see, okay. I can see you getting away with that in a remote area like a Montana or North Dakota, South Dakota. But you can get away with that, right? But you could do that like in a, in a highly uh, populated area. You know what I'm saying? Like, in Montana, like, I mean, of course, it's big news, but, I mean, it's only, what, five people that live there. <laughs> I'm not going to really upset. So, too much to get outcome there. Exactly. Not much at all. Well, here we go. We got a Florida man arrested after calling 911 to seek police intelligence on himself. All right, so he called 911 on himself. Uh, okay. To snitch on himself? Well, he wanted to see what the police had on him. Oh, I got you. I got you. Wow. This hit him up. Hey, man, what, you know, what kind of rap shit y'all got on me, man? Okay. <laughs> uh, hey, man. Hey. Yo, of course, this guy was ine- inebriated, intoxicated, high. Something was going on in order for him to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that would be the most ideal thing to do, to find that information about yourself. But, hey, more power to him. No doubt. We got MVP or foul behavior. The Mets mascot gave a fan the middle finger after another loss by the worst team in the New York area, the New York Mets. Yeah, I heard about that one also, man. You know, hey, man, these mascots, they, they wild these days, man. You know what I'm saying? You got to watch out for him, man. You know what I'm saying? Mr. Met up there uh, shooting, shooting folks the, the bird. You man, it's kids, man. You can't be shooting folks the bird. You the mascot, man. Come on, man. No doubt. And final story today is this. We have a boggly challenged Florida man who used to play golf and unaware that he was black was arrested for DUI to fall asleep at the wheel while high on mixed prescriptions <laughs> for allegedly Molly's and Percocets. Yeah, that's the real headline of the story, bro. They paid for that. That's the real headline of the story. <laughs> shout out, shout out to Tiger. Tiger Woods, baby. Eldritch Tiger Woods, man. Hey, man, listen. 
I kind of had a feeling. I, at first, I thought Tiger was, was, might have been drunk or whatever. But then the more I thought about it, it was probably, you know, I, th- I thought it was pain pills, and that's what it came out to be. You know, dealing with all the injuries and everything, the back surgery and all that, that, that he had to go through, man. But, man, like, remember when Tiger was Tiger, though? You know what I'm saying? Like, like the most, the greatest moment I remember was Tiger Woods, man. Of course, the early years, man, and how he was killing folks out there. You know, but his last, his last major, the U.S. Open, I believe it was, in 08, the way he, he was hurting in, he was already injured, and the way he fought back to win that major, man, like, that was the greatest Tiger Woods moment ever to me, man, so I hope the guy can, he, I just hope he can come back and play. I'm, I'm sure, I'm, I don't know if he'll ever be able to win another major again. I know he's not going to, you know, match uh, Jack Nicholas' record. But I just want to see the guy come back. I want to see him come back, be healthy, man. Just go out there and just give it, give it one more try, man. But this is a humble. It's a very humble experience for him. You know, a guy that, you know, by all accounts was, you know, kind of an a-hole. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying when he was winning all those uh, those majors and all those uh, those tour wins there and championships. You know, he was kind of an a-hole, man. Didn't treat people the right way. And, you know, it's kind of funny how the good Lord has a way of humbling you, man. So maybe this is what needs need to happen to him. Man. I'm glad that he wasn't hurt or he hurt. He, he didn't hurt anybody else out there on the road, man. But maybe this needs to happen to him, man, for Tiger to realize, hey, yeah, I'm black. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not complacent or none of that nonsense. I'm, I'm a black man, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, the folks got a funny way of uh, making you realize that sometimes. I must say, and I don't mean to, I'm not going to try to single anybody or people out, but there are people in sports and in general who are of mixed race but don't realize that the rule in America is if you have one ounce of black, then you're black. You you're can, black. You, you can try to portray the other side of you or whatever, however you want to identify yourself, but at the end of the day, you're still black. You have one ounce. Exactly. And look at LeBron. You know what I'm saying? You know. You know, of course, LeBron knows he's black, but you know, think about you know that level of success and somebody spray painting the N word on your on one of your homes there, man. Like that makes you realize, you know, who you are, you know, in this country. You know, what I'm saying and how people feel about you, man. No doubt, well, bro. If we close up today's boss report, what is your take on today's report, man? Hey, man, great stories as always. Um, I wanted to talk about game one, man, NBA Finals. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's, let's do that. Like, okay, real quick, is that, yeah, the uh, the Warriors blew out the Cavs in game one here, and game two, Sunday night here. You're here to see that game Sunday night. So, heading into game two, do you see any adjustments the Cavs can make to help them compete better Golden State, or is it? Adding Kevin, losing Harrison Barnes, and adding Kevin Durant, and the Cavs only adding spare parts. The UCF, the Warriors are going to win this in probably four or five games here. Here's the thing. <laughs> Here's the thing, man. You remember uh, Nancy Kerrigan back in the day and Tanya Harden and them? That's yes. what Cleveland has to do. Cleveland has, has to hire a hitman, fly him out to go stay or wherever, man. And take a pipe, and you got you got to take out Kevin Durant's knees, man. That is the only chance the Cavaliers have of winning this series, man. That Kevin Durant is unfair. It's unfair. You're talking about a guy before Kawhi Leonard blew up this year. Kevin Durant was the second best player in the world. So you're taking you're taking away Harrison Barnes. You're adding the second best player in the world to a team that didn't, don't even need him. They don't need Durant, and you add him on. And I, and I was telling people before the series even started, Cavaliers have no chance in hell. The, here's the best th- best scenario for Cavaliers next year. Because you're going to lose the series in probably five games. It's going to be a gentleman's sweep. Next year, to, oh, go, this summer, do whatever you have to do to get Carmelo. Go ahead, get Carmelo. That way you can at least have some type of firepower. I know Carmelo's getting a little bit older. But you have to match fire with fire at this point. You have to add another scoring threat to the Cavaliers in order in order for them to have a chance next year to beat Golden State. So you got to add somebody that can give you another 20 points a game. And the only guy out there that can do that is going to be Carmelo. 
because I mean, of course, Paul George is out there also, but I think you need a you need you need a guy like Carmelo at this point to even have a chance to be be, be Golden State next year. And I think uh, GM LeBron is gonna regret giving his boys contracts. J.R. Smith, four yeah. years, seven million. Uh, Iman Shumpert, four years, forty million. Tristan yeah. Thompson, five years, eighty-two million. Yeah, see, the people don't realize. Yeah. The people try to say it's at Golden State loss, but think about it. NBA gave him Game Five when Jeremiah was suspended. They almost won that game. Yeah. Game Six, they fouled out. They fouled out Steph in Game Six, and it was just not. And in Game Seven, that they just couldn't make a shot. Harrison Barnes was like two for fourteen and couldn't make exactly. open threes. Stuff shots he was made. It, it's everything line of Cleveland last year. Exactly. Now, now, of, course, of, course they, yeah. of course they won the game, but from game five on, everything lined up for them. No doubt. You know, the stars aligned. And, you know, give, give, give uh, Cleveland credit last year. For even though all that was going on to go to the state side, you know, Cleveland still had to go out there and win that game seven. I give them credit for that. And it's, I know LeBron didn't foresee Kevin Durant coming to Golden State. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm probably sure he didn't think about that into the equation. But now that it's happened and this series is going to be over with quickly, if you're LeBron, you know, you're know you going to be back in the finals again next year. Do you want to have the same roster in place with Cleveland next year going up against Golden State again? And, and if LeBron is smart, he's going to go to the GM there, uh, David Griffin, and let him know, hey, do what you got to do to get, get uh, Carbello. If we got trade, if, yeah, we got trade Jr. and Iman back to back to New York to make it happen. Let's do it, man. But you have to get Melo or somebody of that caliber to just match firepower. What we're gonna say? Yeah, I was laughing. I know Cal Corver's my guy, but he Cal Corver can't play in this series. He has done not. He he hasn't done anything during his playoff run or during the season. Ever since he's been in Cleveland, he has done nothing. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I hate to laugh about it, but Kyle Corver's doing nothing. Like, Kyle Corver's in. Kyle Corver's going to get a fifth minimum contract this offseason, probably. That's he should have stayed in Atlanta. He should have stayed in Atlanta, well, man, because he, he's providing nothing. Kyle Corver was the crux of the Atlanta Hawks' paradox and problem. Wes Wilcox wanted to blow the team up. Coach Bud didn't. That's all. That's, that's the crux of the that's why, that's why. That's why the front office got reshuffled. Because of that right. schism in the front office. Because Wes Wilcox knew the Hawks need to need to retool. Coach Bud, being the coach, did not want to do it. Oh, and they, they went on a West Coast trip, won five games in a row. Coach Bud got that false sense of security that we that we're gonna be okay. No, you're not. You, you went out. We go be all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you beat Sacramento, Denver, Utah. There's no teams that are struggling. Minnesota. You went on five games right. trip to beat people. Are struggling. You got fat on weak competition. Now you think you're no okay. doubt, no yeah. doubt. Yeah, there well, it is. So, so, so before we close up the spots for today, what's what? How is it going with, with the spots, man? The karaoke spots in Memphis for the people who are in Memphis who want to go there, and my people who want to when they come to town, check you out. Hey, no doubt. Well, it goes down and click, man. We doing we just doing clicks on Saturday nights for right now, man. You know what I'm saying? Until we get a, a, another Friday night spot locked down, man. You know, the whole thing where we, where we was at on Friday nights over there in D.C., it was too far. You know what I'm saying? Too far out, you know, as far as location-wise. So we say, you know what? We're going to cut cut that off for a minute and stick to what we do on Saturday nights. So that's popping. And make sure if you're in the city, you ever come to Memphis, check out clicks. Pool and billiards, man. You can check it out on the website. You go on click the website right now, man. Check out the address and everything for the Memphis location. Come through holler us on Saturdays, man. I'm telling you, we had the city on a lot last Saturday, man. The power went out all across the city. But the only place that had lights was click. So we, we was killing it, man. Everybody was in click last last Saturday night, man. So come through holler us if we can. No doubt, well, folks, it's been a great show. The Boston Report today. We had Mike Vick. Thank Mike Vick on the show. Keep them bright. We also had Jay Monique. So, folks, it's been the Boston Report. Boston Ranch, Boston Ranch, Boston Ranch, Boston Ranch,
for all your photo, video, and voiceover needs, check out the fine folks at Blu-ray Productions. They will take good care of you. If you don't believe me, you can see for yourself. Check out their work at blueberryproductions.tv, the Facebook page, Blueberry Productions, also a Vimeo page, a YouTube page, and it's Blueberry, B-L-U-B-E-R-R-Y, Prod on Twitter. Check them out today. Blueberry Productions, great people, great work, great service. Fantasy football season is fast approaching, and if you're looking for an edge this season, you need to contact the guys at Draft Day Consultants. The concept is a simple one. Draft Day Consultants takes your requests and connects you with one of their trusted analysts, who then guide you through your draft, whether you just need a sounding board on decisions or if you need them to conduct your entire draft. Draft Day Consultants has you covered. Every one of their consultants has a proven track record of success and have conducted hundreds, even thousands of mock drafts. Thanks to this year-round research and analysis, the guys at DDC have an unmatched understanding of player values. So gain an edge on your league mates this season by hitting up DraftDayConsultants.com. That's www.DraftDayConsultants.com. Now get after it, fantasy footballers. Hip-hop fans, I got a great album for you. The debut album from Family Grind ENT, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip-hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, illstreetrex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody, Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today, True Speech and 313 Fresh, Family Grind ENT. Believe in it, get it. Hello, my name is Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academics.com and athleticsconsulting.com. Once again, www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach T Wheel 24 or Instagram Travis L. Williams 24. Or you can call me at 404 542 607. Once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Boss Man Radio Show, covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you.